Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All, and in this video we're going to take a detailed look at the World Modifier. So the World Modifier is one of those modifiers that doesn't seem to get mentioned much, and I think that's a really big shame because there's a lot you can do with it. But there's also a bit of a reason for that, as it doesn't quite have as much of a reason to exist as you might think. But we'll go through this bit at a time and talk through all the different elements of this. So we're going to start with having a look at what the World Modifier actually does, so I'm just going to bring in, I don't know, an Icosphere. Let's come in and up the subdivisions to three, so we've got this quite dense, and then we can have a look at what this does. So, the world modifier, so if I just shift to D to duplicate this, is basically the non-destructive method of doing a merge by distance. So if I click A and then M, and we do merge by distance, we can change the distance here with a merge by distance to combine vertices together, and they basically just get smushed all into one, and they join perfectly. So they get merged together, and then you've only got one vertex here, not any overlapping. Now, we generally wouldn't use this in this way. We'd use this to try and sort out errors in our mesh if we've got two vertices really close together. For example, if we just go back, if I've got a vertex for some reason, let's just click there and there and control an E and then subdivide. If there's some reason that we've got a vertex here and we don't want that, it's just making a messy mesh, we can just click A, M and then merge by distance. Let's bring that value down. We can get to the point where those merge together. Though you'll notice this didn't actually merge perfectly. We'd probably want it merged the other way up. But you get the idea of what this does. Now, the world modifier does exactly the same thing, but in a non-destructive way. It is a modifier, so if we come over to our modifier panels, I've got this add old modifier, just so it looks similar to what people would be used to if they're not using the newer versions of Blender. We've got our world modifier there, which comes up. We can then just up our distance, and it will have exactly the same effect as we start getting to the threshold where these start merging together. So effectively, it is a non-destructive version of the merge by distance function, which is really useful because it means we can come back in theory and later change this if we want to make this less or more for our distance. So just the very fact that it is that function in a non-destructive way is really handy. So let's have a talk about how we could use this. I'm just going to do one example, which is sort of the classic demonstration of this modifier, though it is pretty much pointless. I don't know why this gets used as a demonstration, but I want to do it to show how it works, and more importantly, to explain why this is pointless being used in that way. But I will talk later about two instances where I think this is a really useful modifier, so you can skip forward a bit if you want to just look at those. So what I'm going to do is bring in a monkey head, and then what I'm going to do is go into vertex mode, and then we're going to select those vertices that are on one side, delete them, and then I'm just going to press A to select all of them, G, and then just X to move them a little bit apart. So this is often used as the demonstration, so we're just going to add a modifier, and I'm going to add a mirror modifier on the x-axis, and unfortunately, because I've got a gap here and it's going across the origin, it's not going to work perfectly. We're going to get this hole. So what I can do is add in a world modifier, and then start upping this distance, and that will mean that these points will start to merge in the center, which is great. So we've suddenly solved that problem. But you will notice that also it started merging together other vertices as well, which is a bit of a limit here. However, we don't need to worry about that limit. What I can do is go into vertex mode and select all those vertices on that edge or on the outside edge, only the ones that we want to actually have welded together. Then I can come down to my object data properties here, add a vertex group, so I'm going to click plus. We can rename this, I'm going to call this weld, and then we can click assign. Whenever we do that, always deselect them and select them to check that it's worked. Go back to our modifier panel and I can change the vertex group to only be the one that are welded. You'll notice as soon as I did that, if I just get rid of that, if we've got anything, so let's just put that weld distance up so we can go to somewhere like there where we've got our weld in the center correct, but it's affecting all of the other vertices. We can change the vertex group to just the weld ones and this means it's only going to affect the ones that were originally selected. Now what's very nice about this, though it becomes a slightly odder function, is that when we've added all of these vertices, let's go to our vertex group and select them, because we've got all of these in line, if we ever add in a vertex, so for example if I go to edge mode, control and E and then subdivide this, that vertex that's being created here, because it was connected to two other vertices that were part of the vertex group, if I click select, 
you'll see it automatically becomes part of that vertex group as well. This is one of the ways vertex groups work. If you add more geometry to your mesh, it starts trying to work out if it's part of that vertex group. So this, even though it wasn't there at the point where we created that vertex group, is now part of it because it's made on an edge that was connected to two other vertices. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the reason this is quite useful is if I come here and if I want to add in a subdivision surface, I'm going to press Control and 2 and then just drag that up here. Okay, these all get merged together perfectly fine because they're part of that vertex group and it allows you to create a slightly sharper edge or you could put it down here and then have the smoother edge because it's after the world modifier. So it depends entirely how you want this to work. Now, the point I want to make with this is that this is effectively pointless. And the reason it's pointless is because most of the modifiers where this would be useful have an automatic merge distance option. And what that means is this merge distance, let's get rid of that world modifier so we know that we're not doing anything behind the scenes. And this merge modifier is literally doing what we just did. It is taking this outer edge, turning into a vertex group in the background to say only look at these. And then if we up this value, it will connect them together, making this world modifier entirely pointless in this instance. So while this is a good demonstration piece that a lot of other people show, it just isn't really useful in real life. So let's just get rid of that. So let's just talk about why the world modifier is useful. I'm going to bring in a cube. We're going to S and then Z to exaggerate the length of this cube, apply the scale, and then I'm going to come to add modifier and I'm going to add a bevel modifier. Let's up these segments to, I don't know, eight, and up the amount to the point where we get this sort of pill shape. Now, this is great. We can control this because it's a modifier, so it's non-destructive. So we can bring that backwards and forwards, and it already comes with a clamp overlap, so we're not getting a problem here when we go too far. It stops as soon as it gets to this point. But we do have a slight issue here. If I apply this and then go to vertex mode and select here and press G, you can see that actually there were two vertices on top of each other. Where these curves or these bevels have joined together at the top, they're not actually being merged. So we get this as a problem, which means that if I, let's say, press A and then I and I to insert everything, we get all of this problem geometry where we have those vertices that are two on top of each other. So this can cause problems. We don't want to do that. We want to solve this automatically. So we can do that with a world modifier. We've got two vertices basically on top of each other at each of these points, and we want to get rid of them. So we can just use a world modifier. So add modifier, add the world modifier, and then the distance we can put as relatively small because they're basically on top of each other. And then if we apply all of those, go into vertex mode and G, you can see this is one modifier. If I press A and I, we've got none of those issues. So if I want to do something funky like that, I can do. So this world modifier works really well with the bevel modifier. Now, the reason this came up in a previous video is that if we use ND, which is an add-on that you can get with Blender, especially in Blender 4.2, it is on Gumroad though as well. Now, if I go into edge mode here and here, and then I'm gonna press Shift and two to bring up the ND menu, you can also use F, though I've brought that to Shift and F just because of my other functions that are assigned to F. There's a video on ND, I'll put a link in the description of that. I can go to an edge bevel, and bring in my bevel somewhere like there, press C to clamp overlap, and then press Alt and scroll up to make this nice and round. And what's great about the ND add-on is that it automatically puts this world modifier in wherever it has a bevel modifier. So really nice that they've thought about that. So that's one use of the world modifier. The other one, which I actually think is slightly more useful, but maybe that's just my use of it, is if I bring in a UV sphere somewhere here, I'm going to down this to 16, and then Shift and A, Mesh, and bring in a cylinder, and I'm also going to down that to 16, and let's just scale that, and then S and Z, and then G and Z that up. So we've got something here. Let's actually scale that down a bit more. So we've got something like a piston with a ball joint at the end. Now, what I probably want to do is actually boolean these together to make one part. So what I'm going to do is control and plus to use a boolean modifier. So we've got that acting on this object here. And what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, control and Z, and I'm going to select those edges, those edges, shift and E, and then move my mouse to the side to make those sharp. Because what I want to be able to do is, let's H that, is use a subdivision surface on this to make it smoother. 
So I can either use a subdivision surface here, so add modifier and then subdivision surface, or I can just press control and two, but you can see we get this really horrible effect down here. I mean, this is not nice. This is not what I want in my shape. I wanted something nice and smooth and rounded, not with all this pinching. Now, if we just hide this for a second, the reason this is happening is because as this Boolean happens, just here, so we've got a union Boolean, if we just apply this, this has the same problem that here, if I press G, we've made two vertices on top of each other at each of these joining points. Even though it looks really good, there are two vertices at each of these points. If I just uh, select there and then turn on my statistics, where are we there? We can see I've selected two vertices because there's two on top of each other. Let's get rid of those. I don't like them being there constantly. Now, if I just cut undo until we get to the point where we've got this Boolean, we could apply this Boolean and then destructively come in and merge by distance. But I don't want that. I want to be able to find my cylinder here and then maybe G and then Z that down or something. Like I want to be able to keep my non-destructive workflow. So what I can do is add in a world modifier. So we'll come in a world modifier here. I'm going to bring it above the subdivision surface. And you can see it's now merged those vertices together that were on top of each other, which means that everything's now quads and the subdivision surface works great. So that is my other use of this and one where I find it very, very helpful to do because it saves you trying to fix everything later. So the world modifier is absolutely great. Now I will highlight that for this, this again is semi useful. The reason I say that is if I take this out and for this Boolean, if I change it from the exact solver to the fast solver, most of the time that will actually solve this as well because it decides that those vertices being created are close enough together that they're going to count as one. But if you use Booleans often, you'll know that sometimes the fast modifier isn't suitable in a given situation. Sometimes you have to use the exact solver and in that instance that world modifier is exactly the thing that you might want to be able to solve this problem. And the controllable distance of the world modifier gives some additional uses as well. So the world modifier, pretty underused in my opinion, but it has some very important uses, especially for non-destructive workflows. If you found this video useful, please do hit that like button, subscribe if you're interested. Both of those things really do help the channel out as it makes YouTube more likely to show the videos and other videos to other users. And if you would like to support the channel further and get some good perks at the same time, there is a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and other cool benefits as well. Have a great day, guys.